All right, so here we go. Uh, we begin my I begin my first turn, and my plan here basically is to move uh, through these four or five green challenges, arrive at the red city over here, and buy this shield if I can, if I have gathered enough gold to do so, and I hope that I have. Uh, my plan after that is to move upwards to get to Jithra to buy her as well. So we begin by rolling our movement dice, but we don't have to do that for this turn because there is already a green challenge next to a town here. Uh, so instead of rolling I can just choose to move one adjacent space and I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna move my characters in character into uh, this space here. Uh, this now means that we have to face this green challenge, so we draw uh, one of these green challenges from the deck here, and this is Eyes of the Dead. Uh, one thing here is uh, most of these cards have quite a, quite a lot of flavor text, and I really like that, but for this particular card it has a lot of combat text. So let's see, before combat, test uh, resist 12. If you fail, draw and place an additional ritual token on this card. If you succeed, your hero receives a plus 3 bonus to his first attack roll during his combat. Uh, this is something I should have done immediately. As soon as you draw a challenge, you have to place one of these ritual tokens on it. We draw, draw a skull here, so we place that there. Uh, because if you choose to use your Shame and Bone survival gear to discard this, you still have to place this token. So you do this immediately. As soon as you draw a challenge, you place one of these tokens on it. Uh, then it had a reward of one gold and take this card. You may discard this card anytime uh, during your movement step to reveal the top card of any adventure or ritual deck. Uh, it's not that dangerous in range, but it's quite dangerous in... Uh, magical combat, but that's okay because we are going to attack it in magical combat. Uh, so I choose to face this monster and now I have to test uh, resist. My character has a plus two bonus on resist, so I have to roll 10 or higher. It was a resist 12 check. So let's see, we roll, um, uh, we roll our dice here and see what we get. And that is 17, so that's uh, that's good enough, so we don't have to place an additional ritual token on it. And then we have the various combat phases. Um, these function just like in the base game. You have the range phase, the melee phase, and the magical uh, phase. So you can only attack in one of these phases, and you have to defend in the other phases. Unless you have some allies, then the allies can attack in uh, one of the uh, other phases as well. Uh, so here first we have the ranged phase and the eyes of the dead attack us and we have to defend. It has a an attack value of 11 and it does 1 damage. I have a base value of 3 in range so I have to roll uh, 8 or higher to defend myself. So let's see. That is 10 so that's good enough. Uh, Elga defends herself. The melee phase, they don't do any damage and I don't want to attack them, so nothing happens there. And then we get to the magical combat phase and I attack, I have a base value of 4 and they have a defense value of 13. So I need a 9 or higher to be successful here. And I have 9, just exactly 9, a 6 and a 3. So I am successful and I do 2 damage, uh, normally you would place uh, two wound markers on this card but since it only has two life it's immediately killed so I don't have to do that and now we have successfully uh, defeated this challenge. So before you get to take the reward for this uh, challenge that I successfully defeated, the Eyes of the Dead, I have to place this ritual token on one of these rituals up here. Uh, as we can see here the rituals have uh, they have sun icons, moon icons, and a sun icon over here as well. So there is no skull icon on any one of these cards. So what you have to do now is you have to draw new rituals until you find a ritual that has a skull icon on it. And since we are currently at the green level of challenges, we draw from the green ritual deck. Now we'll do that now. Draw one ritual here. And this one does have skull icons. Uh, right of blood, it says. Uh, here we can see there is quite a lot of flavor text, but I think I'm going to read this after I have completed the ritual. Uh, I will be taking a look at this just to see what we 
uh, have here it says when this ritual is completed uh, each hero may discard all of his wounds if a hero discards uh, decides to do so he skips his next turn uh, these green rituals are for the most part they are uh, beneficial and do something to help you out but some of them also add mon uh, adds monsters to the roaming monster track and such so you have to be a little bit careful but for the most part in the beginning these rituals are actually uh, quite beneficial so we place this now here at the fourth space and then we place uh, our token on one of the spaces so that ritual is uh, halfway done it only had two skull uh, icons on it so if we place the next skull icon on it it will be complete uh, completed now like I said I would like to avoid completing three different rituals because that would um, awaken Herodin so I will do whatever I can to try and complete um, a combination of uh, the other rituals uh, before we get to awaken Herodin that, uh, I think that would be there would be a grave mistake awakening Herodin again. I don't want to face her at all. But we are now done with that step at least. Alright, so having defeated this challenge we get to reap the rewards. And the rewards were uh, one additional gold. We get one experience point because this was uh, a green challenge. And in addition we get to keep this card. And we can discard this to uh, take a look at one of the adventure card. Uh, adventure the top card on any adventure stack or the ritual stack. Uh, this could be useful later on when you are kind of in a bad shape and you want to take a look at what's coming next. Uh, but that is the reward part of this quest. Alright, so having completed our turn, having successfully faced a green challenge, uh, we now have to check the doom track, if it advances or not. Um, like I talked about, this works in a way that I roll these 2d10s and depending on the result I get, the combined result, uh, if it matches the number on the d20 or is higher, we advance the doom track. If it's lower than the number on the d20, we lower the d20 by 1 and then we move on to the next turn. Uh, so this ensures that the game will be kept at a steady pace. Um, so let's roll the die, dice here and see what happens. And that is a 5 and a 2, so that's 7, that's uh, absolutely lower than 18. So we now uh, lower this d20 down to 17, and we just move on to, to the next part of the game. Alright, so we successfully defeated the first adventure here, and uh, the plan for Elga now is to move to this guy here, if we can, to the green adventure here, and then from there, from there uh, try to move up here and get... Uh, some more gold, some more experience before we enter uh, Herman's Gulch to buy the shield. Uh, so first of all we have to roll our movement dice now and we do need at least one hill to be able to enter this space here. Uh, sadly we are not adjacent to that space so we cannot just forego the rolling of dice. But let's see what happens. Let's roll the movement dice. And we do have not only one hill but actually three hill icons here. Uh, so what we do is we just move over one hill here and into uh, the adventure over here. So that was our movement step. Uh, during the last um, turn we didn't have to encounter one of these uh, roaming adventures and that is because uh, we already had an adventure for that turn. If you uh, have an adventure you can skip this but if you just move into an open space you have to check this uh, track down here and then add to the track if uh, there are no uh, roaming monsters to ma match your uh, particular terrain that you currently uh, are standing on. But we now successfully move into this green adventure here and we now get to draw a green challenge. That is a mist speaker. Uh, let's see, he has three health so this guy could be dangerous. The flavor text is, the Makin believes that the mist that covers Zanaga are the breath of the spirits. Their shamans draw great power from the mist. Uh, there is some great uh, flavor text on these, like I talked about. Uh, any phase, if your hero is knocked out, you must discard one experience counter of your choice. That is uh, quite bad. Reward, receive one experience counter of your choice. That is quite good, actually, because we can take the uh, four experience counter 
uh, and level up immediately after this encounter if we are successful. But like I said, he is a little bit tough here. Three health and uh, his magical phase is quite dangerous. He has a magical combat value of 14 and he does 3 damage. Uh, luckily this is the phase where we will be attacking but this is quite a dangerous roll actually. And we have to do this twice uh, to be successful. Um, on the other hand we can skip these phases again. Uh, this is yet another caster monster here so I think I will be attempting this. I have to draw, I have to draw one of these as well. So that's a skull. So I have to draw this before I actually read the card. Uh, that is the first step of uh, after you draw the the challenge. But let's do it like that. I wasn't uh, discarding it anyway. And let's uh, see if we can defeat this uh, this monster. Uh, we can skip the ranged phase and the melee phase because he doesn't do any damage. He doesn't attack, and we don't want to attack there. So then we can attack him in the magical combat phase. Uh, we have a, a base value of 4 and it has a defense of 14. So we need 10 or more to be successful here. And that is not good enough. That is a 9. It was a 5 and a 4, so that's a 9. It's not good enough. Uh, so he actually do, does 3 damage to Elga now. And this is quite bad. Uh, we move on again. We can skip the ranged and melee phase and we attack again. And that is good enough this time. It's a 9 and a 2, so that's 11. So now we do uh, 2 damage to the missed speaker, but he still has 1 health left. And since we were successful in a magical combat attack, uh, we can heal one of our wounds, but that's not going to be enough if uh, this guy hits us again. So let's see what happens. We yet again skip the ranged and melee phase and we get to the magical combat phase. And that's good enough. That's 4 and a 6. So that's 10 plus 4 is 14. That's just good enough. So we successfully kill the miss speaker and on top of that we get to heal yet an additional wound here uh, going down to just one wound, which is great. Uh, this was kind of a little of a gamble on my part. Uh, if you manage to get one of these greater rewards in the beginning, I think the game becomes a little bit easier. And since I'm commenting, uh, I think I need some help on doing this. So I wanted to gamble here and see what happens. I don't have that much to lose if I were to be knocked out either. So uh, this will be fine, I think. So yeah. Successfully defeated Miss Speaker. We now have to place uh, this. We now have to place this uh, token up on the ritual track. All right, so we have four rituals up here at the ritual track. Uh, we have to place the skull uh, token up here, and this will now actually complete uh, one of these rituals. Uh, so I will move this down here, and we will take a look at what this means. Uh, you discard these tokens when you complete the ritual and then you get to check the ritual effect. Alright, so here we have the ritual that we completed. It was the Rite of Blood. Uh, when this ritual is completed, each hero may discard all of his wounds. If a hero discard, uh, chooses to do so, he must skip, he, skip his next turn. Uh, I don't think I will be uh, doing this because I only have one wound on me and I think uh, this will be uh, This will be a waste of a turn actually to do this. So instead we move on to uh, Getting the reward for the misspeaker that we just defeated and the reward was receive one experience counter of your choice uh, Which is obviously going to be the uh, four experience counter uh, so I will take that and in addition, you do get one additional uh, experience counter because you completed a green challenge. So we now have uh, six experience counters, as we can see here next to Elga, and she has one wound on her. So the Rite of Blood was completed, and we now keep it next to the uh, God, uh, God deck up here to check for the various icons and what God we have to wake up. 
Uh, like I said, it doesn't matter what order you complete these rituals in. Uh, as soon as you complete the third ritual, you take a look at uh, the various icons and then you pick the specific god that you, uh, that you have to awaken uh, for this playthrough. Uh, likewise, we finish our turn down here. Uh, let's do this without stopping the video all the time. Uh, Elga has six experience and we now get to our experience uh, experience phase and we can level up. We can use five of these experience points uh, to level up Elga and I will do that. I will discard the newly uh, gotten uh, four experience counter and one of our uh, one experience counter and I will level her up and I will take uh, this plus two magical uh, magical combat or magical uh, attribute value. Uh, I think it's good practice to level up your attack for the first two levels and then after that you can kind of uh, either choose health or maybe stamina depending on what type of character you are playing and what your goal is. Sadly there was no gold uh, reward for that particular challenge uh, which is now discarded and defeated here but I think it was still worth it because leveling up fast is uh, quite deadly in this game. Alright, so yet again we check for the uh, Doom track here. It's at 17 currently, so we have to roll uh, less than 17 to not move the Doom counter up. So let's see, and that is a 10, so that's uh, good enough. So we lower this down to 16 now, and we uh, have already gotten some value out of this uh, first Doom Track turn, uh, so if it moves on next turn, it wouldn't be a complete disaster. Uh, what can be a disaster if you move too quickly through this and don't get the chance to pick out something on the market that you uh, have newly spawned uh, during one of the uh, refill market steps. But let's move on here. Uh, Elga would like to uh, have a go at one of these green adventures up here. Sadly she is wounded so she can only roll uh, four of her dice. So let's see what we get. Okay, we would need a forest for the guy up here and I don't think we can make it because we don't have any forests. But we do have roads, lots of roads and hills. Uh, Three roads and one hill icon is enough to get to this guy here, so we will be doing that. So she goes one, two, three on the roads and then one hill icon. Uh, so Elga has successfully um, gotten to uh, one other green adventure that she wanted to face. So let's just move the camera a little bit back here. We draw the next adventure here and that is a Makin Farseeker. We have to draw an icon or a token here. Let's see, that's a sun, uh, sun token. And the Makin Farseeker has, if Makin Farseeker is on the roaming monster track, uh, its terrain symbol automatically matches your space. Okay. Reward, receive two gold. If you defeat the Makin Farseeker as a roaming monster, receive one experience point. Uh, that's in addition, but he's not on the roaming monster track. He's actually uh, just a regular challenge out on the board. We place him here. He has three health. Uh, he's a little bit dangerous in uh, ranged attack or, or ranged combat. He has a value of 13. He does one damage. He has a value of 11 in melee and does one damage. And then he has a defense value of 11 in uh, magical combat, but I think we will be attempting this guy anyway. Uh, Elga can heal once per turn if she's not extremely unlucky and since we leveled her up she actually has a base value of 6, so we only need a 5 to be successful uh, for this particular monster, even though we have to hit it twice. I think that's, uh, that's acceptable. So let's uh, roll our defense uh, roll here. Uh, it attacks with a value of 13, we have a value of 3, so we need 10 or uh, higher to be successful. And that's not good enough, that's uh, 4, 3 and a 1, so we take take a wound here from this uh, 
mocking Farseeker. Then we move on to the melee phase where we yet again have to defend and we uh, again have to have a 10 or higher here. So let's see. And that's good enough. That's a 9 and a 4. So that's 13. So we successfully defend. And then Elga attacks and she needs 5 or uh, higher. And that is 7. So that's good enough. So Elga will deal uh, 2 damage to the Farseeker. And uh, in addition, she will heal a wound from herself and we are now at just one wound. Uh, let's move on here, start again. Uh, the Mocking Farseeker attacks in ranged combat. It deals, uh, we have to roll a 10 or higher to be successfully in our defense here. And that is 9 and a 7, that's 16. So that's good enough, so we successfully defend. Then in melee, we need 10. And that's 9 and a 9, that's 18, so we are quite successful in uh, our defense rolls here. And then Elga attacks, she needs 5 or higher again. And that's 5 and a 1, just good enough, but it will be enough to kill this guy. And in addition, she can heal uh, herself. And now you see why I uh, wanted to keep playing with this character, because I think she's great in healing herself, especially in the... Um, early game where you can actually take too many wounds and have to spend your gold to uh, to heal instead of buying these great items that help you. She can, if she's a little bit lucky, she can keep on going without having to spend this gold to heal. So that's great, we now successfully defeat uh, this monster and we now have to place uh, this uh, ritual token on one of the rituals. If we take a look at the rituals we have currently on the board, uh, you can s just barely see that we have one ritual that requires sun tokens, one ritual that requires moon tokens, and then uh, one ritual that only requires uh, one of these sun tokens. Uh, the way this works is if there are various spaces to put uh, this token uh, on one of these rituals, you get to choose where you want to put it. So I could uh, choose to actually complete this uh, ritual over here, which only has one uh, sun token on it. But I think that's quite dangerous because we have already completed a skull ritual. If we complete a sun ritual, uh, if we are sort of unlucky and draw moons uh, and cannot do anything about it, we would have to. Uh, we would have to awaken Haradin and she is terrible. I don't want to play with Haradin. Uh, I think I've talked about this four or five times now. So instead I'm gonna choose to place this uh, here on the leftmost ritual uh, giving me some breathing room and some way to control a little bit how I want to uh, awaken and what god I want to awaken. So we now get to reap the rewards for defeating this uh, Makin Farseeker and the reward was received uh, two gold. Uh, you get some extra experience points if he was a roaming monster, but uh, he was not uh, for this particular encounter here. Uh, so I will take three of my gold and exchange this for a five. So it's a little bit easier to keep track of. So we now have six gold here. Uh, in addition, we get one extra, uh, or we get one experience uh, marker because we completed a uh, green challenge. He is now discarded and he is also discarded from the board. And Elga uh, gets through this entire turn again and she is uh, unscathed, so that's good. We now have to roll for uh, the Doom track here, so it's 16 or higher to advance and less than 16 to keep on the zero uh, spot, so let's see. And that's a 2 and a 2, that's 4, uh, so that's good enough not to advance this Doom track, so it now moves down to 15. And I can safely say that we have had great value in the beginning of the game here, and I'm feeling quite confident that uh, this will be a decent playthrough. Uh, we now move on. A uh, couple of options here. We can try to go for uh, the third monster there, uh, trying to co collect one more gold and trying to go back uh, to Herman's 
gold chair to pick up the shield, which is a great item for Elga, I think. Uh, alternatively, we can just move into the city now and see what we get on the market stack. Maybe we can get something else that's uh, six or less that we will uh, wanting to have. But I think that um, since moving into a town is a wild space, you can use any of your dice. There is no harm in rolling and see if we can actually get to one of these. Uh, one of these other green challenges that are currently near us. So let's roll for movement. Let's see, we would need forests. Uh, we do not have any forests, unfortunately. Yeah, there are no forests at all. There are two roads and not much else. Uh, rivers and swamps, which we cannot use right now. Uh, so I think... Alternatively, we could just move two roads and then have a roaming monster encounter here uh, anyway. That would kind of open us up to completing a ritual, but maybe that's, uh, that's fine because you do get gold. You do get to uh, take the reward for these monsters. And I think there is no point in moving into the town right now because we really want this shield. I, don't, I can't really... Uh, I don't really know what else I would like to get. Alternatively, I could get the rune up there at the ziggurat, which is the green town. So I think I will uh, move into the road here, just to showcase uh, yet another feature of this game. Uh, those were the only two uh, movement dice that I can use for this turn here. So uh, our movement ends and we have not uh, encountered an adventure. We cannot encounter any adventures. So we now have to check the roaming monster track here, if there is a roaming monster that attacks us. Uh, and there isn't. There is a roaming monster in the uh, forest, the hills and the mountain areas. So we now have to draw an additional monster to place on this track. And if that monster would uh, correspond to a road icon, we have to face it immediately. So let's do that. Uh, we draw one green monster here. That's Nashan Eldar. And it has a mountain icon, so we don't have to face it immediately. Uh, the reward for this monster is take uh, receive one gold and take this card. You may discard this card to reduce the cost of hiring an ally by three to a minimum cost of one. So that's a decent. Uh, that's actually a decent uh, reward for, uh, especially if we want to we want to hire Jitra, which is uh, she is a very expensive ally. Uh, the token. Ritual token that we have to place is a sun token. Uh, so I will be doing that, placing it on there, and we now don't have to have a uh, roaming adventure. But our turn is uh, sadly over, and we didn't uh, accomplish a whole lot here. So we roll for the Doom track. Let's say 9 and a 1, so that's 10, that's less than 15, so nothing happens again. We lower this down to 14. Uh, hopefully I can be taking my turns a little bit faster now, I don't have to talk a whole lot uh, and explain a whole lot. Hopefully I don't have to pause uh, during each and every one of these phases. Uh, but let's move on here. We now have a few different options. We can forego the rolling of dice to just move into uh, the wood space here and I think I'm going to do that. Uh, I think we have nothing to gain by rolling dice because if we are unlucky we may not get any uh, wood um, any wood icons on our dice. So I'm just going to do that. And then I'm going to uh, draw a challenge here. Dolak Wielder. Uh, reward. One gold and one survival gear. Uh, this guy looks amazing. I really like the artwork on uh, in, for this expansion. It's really great. Uh, there are basically two different civilizations in Zanaga. These lizard men and some sort of a lion creature. Let's see, the Dolak wielder is quite strong in melee combat. It has a battle value of 14, uh, does 2 damage, and you get 1 gold and 1 survival gear, which is uh, acceptable, I guess. I don't want to use my shaman bones to discard this guy. Uh, first of all, we have to we do have to roll for our 
draw one of these ritual tokens and that's a wild token here so we get to place it uh, wherever we want let me just pick this guy up before I forget him all right so uh, I say let's go for it let's let's try to kill this guy he only has two health so we only have to deal uh, damage to him once and he has 11 in magical uh, defense uh, doesn't attack in range and we don't want to attack so we skip the range phase he attacks in melee phase we have to defend we have to get 13 or uh, higher and I, this is kind of dangerous but I think it will be fine and that's an 8 and a 2 so that's not enough so the Dolak wielder will deal two damage to us we take two wounds and then we attack in the magical phase we have a base value of six he has a defense of 11 so we need five or more and that's a four and a two that's six just enough again uh, so that will deal two damage to him kill him and we get to heal uh, one of our wounds for a successful magical attack uh, so now this guy is defeated and we uh, get to place this. Now I won't be stopping and showing the rituals. We have uh, two different sun, sun rituals and one moon ritual. So I will just be placing this on um, I think I'm actually going to place this on uh, the moon ritual. So we are close to uh, well actually I'm going to place it on the sun ritual. So we are not close to uh, completing two different rituals up here which would awaken Herodin. So I place it up here, we now have two sun rituals that are near completion and uh, if we feel that we are threatened by Herodin Awakening we can quickly complete the sun rituals by uh, completing one of these challenges down here. So that was, the, uh, that was the adventure part of the turn, we now have successfully defeated this green challenge. We get to reap the rewards, and that is one gold, so we get one additional gold bringing us up to seven, and one survival gear. And this is survival gear of your choice, so I will be taking, uh, obviously taking the shame bones, which I think are the strongest uh, ones to have. And those are the only two shame bones I have in the game for my solitaire playthrough, so I cannot take a third one. I will have to use one of these to be able to take the next one. The Dolak wielder uh, is discarded along with the corresponding miniature. Then we roll for the Doom Track again. Uh, the counter is at 14 right now, so we need uh, 13 or less to not move or not advance. And that's a 5 and a 9, so that's fine. Uh, I don't have to don't have to advance so we move this down to 13 now and we have been extremely lucky right now with completing these challenges uh, I did forget to give myself one experience point for completing this challenge I will be doing that now uh, we then move on uh, it's our next turn we get to move sadly we are wounded so only four dice or movement dice Let's see, we would need a forest. We do have a forest, so that's great. And we have a road. So I will just be moving one road and one forest into the next uh, green adventure here. Attacking uh, the guy there. Alternatively, I could have gotten the rune, but I think that the uh, both the ally and the shield are more important to me than uh, having having that specific rune. So I think I'm going to focus on trying to get either the shield or the ally. And right now it looks like actually the shield will be probably better. Well, the ally would be better to get, but the shield will be easier to get. So we will see what happens here. Uh, let's draw our next challenge. And that is a mocking flinger has two health. Before combat, the player to your left must choose one of your allies. That ally must attack during this combat's first ranged phase. Uh, I don't have any set rules for these non-solitaire cards. So what I like to do, I just make up the rules on the fly. Here it would be, if I have one ally, that ally has to do that. If I have two allies, I just roll a dice to see uh, which one of them does it. 
but we don't have any allies, so nothing happens here. The reward is two gold and one experience point, but he is quite dangerous in ranged combat. Uh, he has a value of 15 and does two damage. So this is a little bit... I don't know, this is a little bit tricky. Uh, do we chance it? Because we would lose so much right now if we were to be killed by this guy. We do have to draw one ritual token for him and that's one moon. Ah, the question is, should we discard this guy and try to find something else? Uh, the reward is great. An additional experience point, which would mean we can level up. And uh, two gold, which is just simply amazing. But... Yeah. Yeah, he only has nine in defense for uh, magical attack so even if he hits us uh, we should be able to kill him so let's do that let's do this uh, I kind of thought that he had three health but he only has two health so it, it's enough with one attack so let's do this uh, he attacks in ranged combat he has a value of 15 we have defense of three so we need 12 or higher and that's 18 that's great we managed to successfully defend here uh, we don't take any damage uh, he doesn't attack in melee, and I don't want to attack in melee, so we move on to magical. Uh, he has a defense of 9, I have a base value of 6, so we need 3 or higher here. <laughs> that's just 3. Oh man, that was, uh, that's, that's kind of close actually. But we are successful, and in addition we do get to heal this last wound, which is great. Uh, so this was an amazing, uh, amazing turn for us. This moon, uh, moon ritual token is now placed on the moon ritual that we had up here. And now all of our three rituals are just one step from completing. We do have to be careful not to complete uh, a sun and the moon ritual because that would, like I already talked about, awaken Herodin. And it seems like Herodin is the, the base, go base god to awaken. Uh, it seems like it's easiest to actually awaken uh, a god that has three different rituals because you draw these randomly, uh, which makes sense, I guess. Then the reward is two gold, so you get two additional gold pieces, one experience point and one experience point for successfully completing this green challenge, since this guy had an experience point as a additional reward here. So that is great. We now get to the experience phase. We can now use our five experience points here. And we level up. And again with the same reasoning I'm gonna take yet another magical combat here. Uh, solidifying our uh, magical combat attack. We now have a base value of eight which should be well enough for both the green and yellow challenges that we have to face um, shortly. So this guy is defeated. Uh, we now have to roll for uh, Doom Track, which is currently at 13. So we are fast approaching um, an advancement here. Let's see. And that's just 13, so that's enough. Uh, the Doom Track goes up to 1. And we reset the D20 to 18 here. Alright, so nothing happens at 1. Uh, beginning from 2 and onwards, every even number will uh, take away from the market space. And every odd number will refill the market space. So next turn, when we advance the Doom Track, I will have to roll for every item that would uh, have a chance at being discarded and all the items that, ha that have a chance to, at being discarded right now are items that cost five or less because I'm still at the green level of adventuring. Uh, once we move on to uh, yellow it will be eight or less and once we move on to blue it will be ten or less and once we move on to uh, red it will be fifteen or less so every item should have a chance at being discarded at that level. This is also to simulate that 
uh, in the beginning of the game you cannot actually uh, you can't actually afford buying some of these expensive items so m mostly you get to afford uh, these items that cost five or less but okay that was uh, the complete turn all right so let's zoom out a little bit here so we can see the complete board I didn't uh, I didn't manage to see that we couldn't see where my character was but uh, I remedied that now we can now see a little bit more of the board. Uh, the plan is still to either get uh, Jitra or the shield. The shield is down here. It's uh, pretty easy to get to that town from where we are currently, which is here. Uh, the ally is over here in uh, this purple town here. And uh, I would much like to have uh, the ally first, but she is quite... Uh, it's quite tough to get to that town. I think I'm gonna have to uh, go around these mountains here uh, because if I get stuck at these hills and the forests here I will have to complete these challenges and then I will have to uh, complete the moon ritual and with some unlucky uh, draws maybe even complete a sun ritual directly after that which will then mean that we have to awaken Herodin. Uh, so let's see what happens first let's roll our dice and we can decide if it's worth trying to uh, go around the mountains or if we are lucky and can go uh, into the mountains into the green challenge that is over here alternatively we could face this yellow challenge as well and take a gamble on uh, it not being that difficult but that's quite dangerous but let's see okay we have uh, we have a forest, we have some swamp and lakes or some uh, rivers and then we have some hills. And uh, let's see. We have two hills and a forest. Yeah, this is enough actually. This is I think this is enough to get to the uh green challenge. First, we use uh one of these uh, let's see if you can see. Yeah, you can see that we use one that has a swamp and a river on it to move into the town then we use one uh, hill to move into the hill here we use another hill to move into the hill over here then we use this river uh, no actually that was a damn it I thought that was a I thought that was a mountain but that was well let's do it like this then uh, let's discard this dead man compass because we are so close. Uh, what I was going to do with uh, this fourth die, I move into the river area here, and then I thought we had a mountain here to move into the green adventure, uh, but there was a forest actually. So what I'm going to do is discard this uh, dead man compass, dead dead man's compass. Discard to change the result of one movement die. So I will discard this to change it to a uh, to a mountain area like so and then we use our fifth die to move into uh, the challenge here bringing us closer to Jitra and um, bringing us out of harm's way of these roaming monsters so I have now lost my dead man's compass um, and we get to draw a new challenge here Tainted Wild Dogs has two health which is good uh, reward 2 gold uh, it's semi dangerous uh, it's not that dangerous in ranged combat since we have a defense value of 3 but it's quite dangerous in melee combat but let's see if we can do this we have to draw one of these and let's say wild uh, a wild icon uh, now you cannot choose to not place this wild icon if there are open spaces you have to place the wild icon but, but this can work in our favor uh, because if we place this on one of the sun rituals we can complete that sun ritual and then we can stay put near the mountains and complete one of these roaming rituals with, which would complete the third uh, sun ritual and that will mean that we don't have to awaken Herodin. But let's see here uh, the tainted wild dog uh, attacks it has a attack value of 10 in range and I have defense value of 7 so we need uh, or 3 so we need 7 or higher 
That's 5 and 10, 15, so that's fine, we defend. Oops, drop my dice here. Then we get to melee, which is the dangerous part. Uh, it has a value of 12, and we have a defense value of 1. We need 11. And that's 9 and a 5, that's 14, so that's fine. Uh, we successfully defend. And then we attack in... Uh, we attack in magical combat, but we don't have to roll here actually. We have a base value of 8 and it has a uh, defense value of 10, so we will, whatever we roll, we will successfully deal 2 damage to it. So we successfully kill this guy now, and uh, we now have to complete uh, one of our rituals. All of our rituals have uh, one space left and this can be placed on any of them and I think I'm gonna complete one of the sun rituals uh, so let's just see here uh, well I will have to check something first alright so here's something I'm a little bit unsure of uh, in the rules it says completing ritual cards here uh, after a ritual is completed, all ritual tokens on the card are shuffled back into the pool. Uh, that's, uh, that's not the point. Uh, completed ritual cards are removed from the ritual track and placed next to the stack of primal god cards until a primal god awakens uh, or awakes. Now, some of these rituals have remain in play abilities. Uh, the question here is, if one of these rituals is completed before the god is awakened, does it remain in play or do you actually place it next to the stack of uh, god cards because these three rituals that you place next to the stack of god cards uh, you discard once the god is uh, com once the god has awakened uh, so that would mean that this uh, remains in play ritual that i want to complete right now because it, it is quite a det detrimental effect uh, it says that uh, every time I roll three or more dice for my movement, I have to take one exhaustion uh, marker or I have to take exhaustion uh, to my character. And that is quite detrimental because you always do roll uh, more than three dice. Uh, the ritual itself says that you can choose not to roll uh, more than two dice, but I think that's quite det detrimental. I think I'm gonna play it like that. I'm gonna play that this uh, ritual effect does not get resolved now because the god is not uh, awakened, so nothing will happen for these first three rituals. Even though I talked about the first ritual uh, where I could have healed uh, my character if I wanted to, I didn't do it actually, so uh, there will be no discrepancy in uh, how I play the rituals. But I think that this would be quite uh, detrimental to me if I do it right now. And if I don't do it right now, um, it will get resolved once the god is awakened anyway, so then it will remain in play. Um, let's, have a, let's have a look at this ritual here. It's this one, Ritual of the Blazing Sun. And it says, while this ritual is in play, when heroes roll three or more dice for their movement, they must take uh, one exhaustion. Heroes may choose to roll fewer movement dice during their movement step if they wish. Another thing that I don't really understand, if this is how it works, uh, it is only it is one of these rituals uh, considered to be in play while the others are not, or can you have more rituals uh, with remains in play effects. Uh, I don't think the rules state this. I know that for some of the other expansions you uh, replace the remains in play cards with new cards that you draw uh, that are have higher numbers. So for instance in Island of Dread uh, there are some effects that stay in play but if you draw a card that has a higher value uh, it will replace the other card. I think it's not how this works. I think these can remain in play or it should work like that but I can't find anything that says that it does work like that. Uh, but we'll see when we get to that during later gameplay. I think for now since this guy had uh, two of these tokens on it already I will place the third one and complete this but I will not resolve this effect 
because uh, rules say that you place this next to the uh, god card stack and then you awaken a god and discard these three rituals that you use to awaken the god. So I think I will place this next to the uh, god cards and nothing else will uh, happen here. Alright, then uh, we successfully defeated this tainted wild dog. Uh, we get a reward of two gold, so let's exchange again. Uh, let's exchange three gold and five gold for a uh, ten marker. So we now have eleven gold pieces here. And uh, since this was a successful green adventure, we get one green experience as well. And this guy is discarded both from the board and from uh, for the card that we have drawn then we have to draw uh, we have to roll for uh, the doom track so let's see it's uh, the d20 is currently at 18 so we have to roll 17 or less and that's eight and a one that's nine so that's fine uh, doesn't advance here here we go 17 and the turn is complete so we now move on next turn we can move alternatively we could just move one space into the mountain uh, next to where we are currently and encounter one of these uh, encounter one of these roaming monsters here which will then uh, place this sun symbol on the third and final ritual to awaken a god and there will be a god that has two sun symbols and one skull symbol which is probably not the very best god <laughs> I think the sun and the skulls are quite detrimental to players but I think it's fine it's better than uh, awakening Herodin which is a terrible god to, f to be facing so I think I'm gonna do that instead of uh, moving I'm gonna uh, just instead of rolling movement dice, I'm gonna move one space here and then I'm gonna encounter one of these two uh, creatures here. When there are uh, two different creatures with the same um, with the same terrain symbol, you can choose which one of these you wanna uh, face against. And I think this mocking gladiator is way too dangerous. It attacks both in ranged and melee and it does two damage in melee combat while the Nashan Elder attacks in melee and magic and we will be attacking the magic so nothing will uh, happen there and I don't need the extra gold that you will be getting from the Mocking Gladiator um, so I'm gonna choose the Nashan Elder here has a reward of receive one gold and take this card you may discard this card to reduce the cost of hiring this is also an additional bonus because we are going to get Jithra uh, next turn so this is uh, absolutely fantastic for us right now. Um, as you can see it has value of 15 in melee but does 1 damage only. And it has this sun uh, token on it. So let's face off with this guy. We skip the uh, ranged phase because it, has, it doesn't attack there. We don't want to attack. Uh, it has 2 health. Uh, it attacks in melee. We have to defend. We have to roll 14 or higher. And that's 11, so that's not good enough. We take one wound, and then we attack in magical combat. Uh, we have a base value of 8. It has a defense of 11, so we need 3 or more. And that's 13. So that's just uh, good enough. We made a successful magical attack. We get to heal, and we get to kill this guy. Uh, so, first of all, we place this on the uh, last ritual of the three that we had. And this will now go here and it will uh, resolve this ritual rebirth. Like I said, I don't think this triggers anything at the beginning before you awaken the god. So I think this nothing happens here. Uh, you just place this next to the god stack and now we have three rituals there. Uh, so I have to awaken one of the gods. Uh, I will take a closer look at the stack now. Alright, so here we have the uh, God card stack and our uh, three completed ritual. You only need to take rituals, you only need to take a look at the topmost uh, icon here. Uh, so here we have a skull, 
a sun and a sun and then you have to find a god that matches this combination of uh, icons and that's this guy here or gal I don't know if uh, it's male or female let's see that is uh, gore bore gore the savage that doesn't sound very good actually it has nine uh, health here so that's quite savage uh, gore bore gore receives plus one bonus to its ranged melee and magic damage values for each doom counter on this card and move one doom counter from this card onto your hero at the end of each phase if your hero is knocked out return any doom counters on your hero to this card uh, so it's not that dangerous, but how many Doom Counters does it start off with? I uh, don't actually know. Maybe it says up here. Oh yeah, that, that's because of these. Yeah, that's, that's right. Uh, it has these omen effects. Uh, if you were to complete a ritual with a uh, sun icon, the active hero must take one wound, then place one Doom Counter on this card. Uh, if you were to complete a ritual with a skull, uh, the active hero must take two wounds and place two doom counters on this card. If eight doom counters are placed on this card, all players lose the game. Oh man. Uh, so I have to be extremely careful here. I cannot complete uh, that many rituals from now on. Yeah, this, is, this guy is quite savage actually. Oh man. Uh, yeah. Ranged melee and magic. Oh man, uh, the I think the magic and range could be mitigated by me having greater defense, but the melee will hurt like like hell once we get there. Uh, so yeah, let's hope we do not uh, complete that many rituals until we can actually have a go at this guy. So I think uh, after I have bought Jitra, I have to move on to the yellow adventures immediately because this uh, this guy is just quite dangerous. Uh, again, I'm pretty glad that I didn't uh, use that special rule because that would just make this guy impossible. This is like as I thought in uh, in Arkham Horror if you have to place doom counters on him constantly uh, you just lose the game after a while. But okay this is now our awakened god. Uh, it's not as bad as Haradin I think. <laughs> Hopefully. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Haradin isn't that bad. Maybe I, I was just extremely unlucky, but this is now our god. Uh, we place this card with uh, the omen side up somewhere uh, next to the board, and I will do that at the side here, uh, next to the market stack, I think. Uh, 